Hello, folks. You are watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our channels and networks. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Mike Morales here in the heartbeat of the San Gabriel Valley of soggy Southern California. That guy out <laughs> there is. Dave Dini is Simon Vista, California, North San Diego County. North, North County. County. North County, for those of you who are from, you know, that part. I used to live there. I that you and NC, North County. I get it. Uh, Dave and I are beside ourselves because we are we are judging and dissecting and tasting, yeah, a celebrity brand. A celebrity brand. These two Yahoos. Yeah, these two clowns right here. <laughs> Sammy and no. Guy. Guy and Sammy. Guy Fieri and, and Sammy Hagar, who Sammy, of course, the original. The original uh, uh, celebrity with his own tequila when he before he sold Cabo Wabo, and and if anybody you know he was the guy he was the guy that put that made that happen. Although although he's not the first celebrity. If, if you if you follow the history of celebrities involved with tequila, there's been more. There's been more. Uh, Bing Crosby is the first one to actually import Herradura into the United oh. States. Really? Yeah. Bing Crosby and his partners, Phil Harris, uh, was Phil Harris. Uh, Phil Harris was a comic actor. And the two of them uh, just wanted good tequila. And again, anyway. Dave, I love the packaging. And Dude, why is yours blue? <laughs> uh, could be because of my camera. It's a brand new camera. I may have to fix the little, the hue and stuff like that. Maybe if I go back a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of a green. <laughs> it's a, it's like an aqua. It's more, it's truer on Dave's camera. I've got a brand new camera that I have to work with the colors on, uh, but it looks blue on my camera. It actually looks kind of cool. It looks, but it's like a, it's like an aqua or turquoise. It almost right? looks like this other blue brand. <laughs> oh, that one. Yeah, that one. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you hit that one because, eh. anyway, uh, I love the packaging. I, I, I you know what else too, Dave? I we noticed this on camera that the blanco more had like a smoother finish, and the, the blanco bow, and this one is more tactile. It feels like bisque. Yeah, it grips. It's got that. Yeah, grip. it's it's like a it's like a ceramic bisque. That's what it feels like. So, or kind of like a, a truck bed liner, spray on truck bed liner. Oh that yeah, yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyway, I've never had the reposado. Don't know what anything about it, uh, but we're gonna pop this baby open. We're gonna okay. pour some in the, in, the, in the my stossel. Mm. By the way, I I've been to this distillery. Uh, I talked about that in, with our blanco uh, review, um, and everything is bottled by women by hand. Okay, by bottled hand. and yep. labeled. So that this is how. If you're not familiar with Baja Riba. Go check out uh, our, our Tequila Aficionado's Instagram. That is the same. Oh, you know what? Okay. Yeah, you're using the Estaso Jarrito for, oh, for Mezcal. I'll save that. I'll save that. Right. You know why I'm saving it. Um, I just thought, to be, there you go, Glen Cairn. Handy Glen dandy Glen Cairn. I'm going to pour mine in my Glen Cairn. Uh, wow. You know what, folks? That's go ahead. Very dark. First of all, it's very, it's a pale pale straw that is not very dark <laughs> no and there's probably a reason for that but for what four to five years four to five months oh months i'm sorry yes 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 it's a uh, sado easy there <laughs> no no there's a there's a there's a reason for that and as we go through our tasting i will discuss why I just came back from their distillery uh, back in November 2022. I was fortunate enough to be on a, on a tour, a trip, a three-day trip with Baja Riba Tequila that also makes their tequila there. And I'm very familiar with this distillery. Uh, I will tell you some more stories about it. If you're a subscriber to our magazine, read the April issue of, of Tequila Aficionado Magazine. And if you are a subscriber you will have available to you a special edition Cinco de Mayo issue for Baja Riba that will also include my article. It was 4,500 words of a, of a three-day trip. 
Look if at look at the knows legs. Mike, he just goes on and on. I know. I go on and on. But you know what? <laughs> it's worth it. If you want to know you why. You a lot of talk about this place. Exactly. And it's a small place. It's small. It's a small to mid-sized distillery. But wow. there's so much. There's a legend. It is considered the first distillery in a Totonilco, which is the highlands of, of uh, Jalisco. Oh, oh, my God. Nice. Look at the legs and tears on that, too. I dude. know. You it's see great. That on my screen? It's great. I don't know. I don't know if you can see it. On e oh, there they are on yours. Yeah, they're on mine. Black. Because I have a new camera. <laughs> but now, now I will say the I legs see it. and tears. Like there. The legs and tears are a little bit thicker than they were on the Blanco. And I think that's because of the barrel. Looks like it'll have about the same kind of mouthfeel, slightly oily. Right. A little thick. Now, uh, I've seen their barrel room. I've been to their bottling plant as well, which is off-site. It, it, they have a bottling facility in the distillery, but they don't use it. They actually have a bottling plant uh, in, 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 uh, uh, in Atotonilco, in, uh, in the town of Atotonilco. Mm. Actually, is that Atotonilco or Guadalajara? It's in Guadalajara. <laughs> I gotta look at my. I gotta look up my own notes. Beautiful lakes and tears. So it's really nice. It is really nice. Nice. They're really, really forming nicely. Yeah, even more so than with the blanco. I've noticed. Leaving now the trail of tears down behind them. That's cool looking. Um, I will say, do not be surprised and do not be discouraged by the color of the the very light straw this is indicative of this distillery they use old beat up barrels because they are uh initially they were agave growers to begin with right so so they want that agave to shine it does say lightly charred used american oak bourbon barrels four to five months beautiful that's not very long no not very long so you're not going to get it's just enough to round out the edges. Not that their Blanco was harsh at all. Oh, I, no, I mean, it wasn't. That was it great. Was very, it's a very, very uh, approachable, as Dave said, a very approachable sipper. So, yeah. <clears throat> oh, see, and all I get is baked agave. Are you getting any wood notes at all? Just a hint. Just a hint. See, on this side, I get more agave than what I'm probably getting here. Maybe a bit more barrel and a bit more barrel spice, but just it it's it's almost uh there's almost not a lot it's secondary not a lot of barrel. Not yeah, a lot yeah. Of barrel. And it's at the bottom too. When you if you can if you break up your Glen Karen in three separate sections, it's almost like right at the bottom where the edge of this liquid is where you can see it. You'll smell it. It'll come, it'll come to you. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that's a trick that was taught to me by our other TJ in Colorado, oh, yeah? uh, Todd Mayville, who is a bourbon steward. And there's a way, there's an actual way to use these Glen Cairns as a really better tool than I even thought. Huh. And we had, we had interviewed the Glen Cairn, the North American representative for Glen Cairn, uh, <laughs> Marty Duffy. And, you know, he was the one that kind of showed us how, how to handle the Glen Cairn. And, and its functions, but yeah, if you hold it sideways, because that's the beauty of this glass is you can hold it sideways and you can, you can you break know, it up. Almost, almost snort it. Almost, but with, you don't even spill it either, which is nice. Yep. It's very similar to the, to the Jarrito that we like using as well. This nice. Do you want to dive in and see what else we're getting? Because I think it's opened up about as much as it's going to open up, but I could be wrong. Could be. I mean, as we went on with the Blanco, it opened up a yeah. little bit more. Yeah, it so. opens up more. Yeah. Here we go. Salud. Salud. Mm. <clears throat> I get a little of the bourbon barrel. <clears throat> the dryness of it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> nice. It's got a little more sweetness than the Blanco had. Yes. Um, but you know what? 
hints of wood not much just hint. no I, I was gonna visually it's beautiful i mean i mean even after your first pass it's beautiful to look at because the legs and tears are really playing nicely i know it's ju they're just there and they're like they're enchanting yes um you know they're not clingy to the glass they're just they're just forming just all of it's natural you just but get I, trails of tears just like a jellyfish floating in the ocean yeah you know <laughs> like your dreams <laughs> <laughs> like your dreams of success they just you know float away um <laughs> i'm sorry it's like a, it's like a squid you know it does it does that on your screen right the, um, the dreams of success just floating away floating know. away would this make a great screensaver you know that that would just move where, where it would just form legs and tears and just dream and tears all day long it's hypnotic it's hypnotic to look at it really is um but the flavor now the 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 pepperiness that we got mm -hmm. in the blanco, I'm not sensing that it's turned into like sometimes the barrel will give it like a hot cinnamon flavor to it. Did no. you get any of that? Or no, or I didn't get the hot cinnamon. I I got the agave pepper. That, still right, it's still there. Yeah, it's still there. A little more noticeable on the front of my tongue. So, on my second pass, it seemed mm -hmm. a little more there. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's another easy sipper. Mm. You're right. It's dry on the back end of the palate. Mm -hmm. Um, a little bit more of the <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit more of the char. Um, how's your finish? Not as long as the blanco. That's what I was gonna say. I thought it was just me. No, it's not as long as the Blanco. The Blanco itself had a had a had a, a longer finish, mm -hmm. surprisingly, because it doesn't it doesn't enter enter that way. Yeah, it's got the nice, nice uh, the excitement on the tongue, the when you first yeah. taste it and it stays on the front and it doesn't go in the back as much. No, the back is more dry, like you mentioned earlier, like on your first pass. Mm -hmm. It's drier. There's a bit on the rear and the sides of the tongue, you're going to get a little bit of that bourbon bitterness. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. It's not, I'm I call it bitterness for the lack of using any other word. It's more like a more like the char. Um, it needs to be there because because that's what bur bourbon finishes dry like that. The finish isn't down here, it's it's staying at the front of my tongue. At the front of your tongue? In front and mid of my tongue is where the finish is wanting to be. You know, I can taste it on my tongue more than I can do it. See, and I got I got more of it on the sides and the rear of my tongue, mm. which is where it belongs, in my opinion. But uh, now I'm now that I've had a second pass, it's beginning to uh, it's beginning to finish a little bit longer. Yeah. It's just surprising how the barrel smoothed out that that edge. Mm -hmm. To make your finish not appear right away, like at the Blanco. And um, again, I'm not put off by the color. I, I really don't. I could care less, honestly, because there are still there are still some barrel notes in there. If it's lightly charred in only four to five months, I wouldn't expect a lot of color. Yeah, um, but it's not disappointing if you're an oak head. That's the other thing I'm getting to, mm. is that the wood notes are there if you know if you're a, an oak head if you if you're you know a bourbon guy a whiskey guy because yeah. you know that's how people migrate from from one from one spirit to the other um if you're looking for something that's got that you know that sazerac um profile to it you're not you know, you're not going to get that because this distillery is is a family-owned distillery their their job is to present the quality of the agave that it starts with and and i'm so i'm in i'm in love with the look on this thing man the, <laughs> i could i'm telling you there the legs and tears are hypnotic now i said i'd throw you a little curveball here okay so give me the curveball single barrel reposado 
Oh, single barrel. Single and... barrel. If I compare the two, definitely noticeable difference. Oh, yeah. The bottle. <clears throat> and I will admit, I've had, I've had the Reposado before, and I've compared it with the single barrel. The single barrel <clears throat> has more bolder flavor notes than the blend would. Yeah, this, well, then um, I'm glad you brought that up because I had no idea that they had a single barrel. It was not it something. Was, it was, was a limited edition and I saw it and it's like, I had to, I had to grab it. So and this is the more commercial one that you're going to find. And what's it, how's your, and your packaging is different too, is it? No, it's the same. It's the same. It's the same green, but it's just got a black bottom. Oh, it has a, I see. So the, okay. I see what they did. So when they, when they spray painted the bottom, it's got a little bit more darker. Yeah. yeah. This one is now, does it say, does it say Santo Fino on it? On the, on, single on your single barrel. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah. It just, it, the only real difference is right up in here. It says single barrel. Wow. I wonder how that came about. Did, did you get any, any, when did you get that bottle? Uh, were you still in virginia i think i was still in virginia wow so it was in a it was in a uh wait they had a single barrel for for uh control states what a waste what a waste no, of a i had to order barrel. it online i had to order it online oh and you ordered it from from where old town or santo oh wow santo. they shipped it to you yeah they did santospirit.com mainly because they had the tequila there they were able to sell it there they could ship it there oh okay 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 so they were already in that control state so they that's were already why. in the control state i so. see okay so what what is the difference between the single barrel and the the more mainstream commercial barrel the blended version all right let's just say the single barrel just had more flavor more bolder notes whereas like the commercial ones seem to be blended so it makes it nice and smoother for the masses i'm taking I'm now guessing. what was what was the single barrel was it whiskey or was it bourbon also i'm not exactly sure it's been a little bit beyond my current memory <laughs> okay okay um do you know if it was bourbon or whiskey? I don't know. It says they're using bourbon barrels for the the Reposado. I think they're using the bourbon barrels. They just didn't blend it up. They just chose a barrel or two. And well, I can I can tell you that they're the both Sammy and and Guy Fieri have their own barrels <laughs> with their names on it. Yep. If you don't believe me? Go I check out. It. Go check out the Instagram. It's there. Uh, and and um and i will tell you that i had a good look at a lot of their barrels uh i mean they did some special barreling for total wine at this distillery uh you know they they spray paint the top uh, of the of the lid of the barrel and uh you know with the logo of whomever that barrel belongs to and you know obviously they're going to they reuse barrels there were a lot of them that were still not used yet, like the old Total Wine. I don't even know who's got Total Wine barrels, uh, you know, single barrel bottling for Total Wine. I don't know. I don't know which Total Wine has it, but those barrels, a lot of them were empty. And chances are they're going to reuse them, spray paint somebody else's name on the top of it, <laughs> you know, because that's what happens, folks. That's 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 what happens in a barrel room. And Santo even has a 110 Blanco. We're supposed to get that, and I, we haven't gotten it yet. I haven't gotten it. I haven't and, seen it. And I got to tell you, having having been to that distillery, having had the family brand, 1937, and also El Viejito, I thought that was one of the things I thought to myself, what happens if they were to amp that up to 110 proof? And they're going to do it. Santo has it. Oh, I, I, I got, I, I'm going to go back to those. I'm going to go back to the PR company that made this happen. I'm really so thankful for them to make it happen. Cause I, you know, Dave, 
you and I have been chasing this brand for a long time, right? I oh, know. Yeah. Since since I was a wee blow, you know. Yeah, since you <laughs> since you since you first started. This yeah. is a brand of promise nominee in the in the in the Reposado category. Nice. I, I wow, man. Outstanding. And this is really old school, too. I will tell you that's an old school distillery, old school mindset. This is not mainstream. They're not. When, even when I call this reposado a mainstream, the fact is it's not blended because blending is an extra is it's an it's it's extra an extra step. It's more manual, uh, more manual labor because those barrels are no easy feat. To try and to when blend. I said blending er earlier, it's they take a couple barrels, put them in a big vat and bottle. Yeah, that type right. of thing. Well, you know, and and to be fair. I know that they that they they uh, uh, emphasize uh, uh, Juan Eduardo Nunez, who is the family owner and master distiller. Yes, he knows how to distill, but he also has a woman that handles a, a lot of the. She's a chemical engineer, uh, and <laughs> did not get a chance to meet her. She it was her day off when we showed up. Oh my god! Mm. But you know the, the lady probably works like seven days a week anyway. But um, I would have loved to have met her. Hopefully our next trip, I'll be able to pick her brain a little bit, but um, beautiful tequila. I, I what's about 47 a, bucks, 47 bucks at total wine. All day long. All day long. Yeah. All day long. Um, no. Could you put this in a cocktail? Would you do this in a cocktail? <laughs> I hate doing I know, that. I know. I, well, yeah, I because really I, I, but you could, they have recipes here. They have a oh, that's right. Party. Yeah, they have their, their booklet. And I, I Reposado I, Party Punch with uh the the Reposado cranberry, orange, pineapple, uh, club soda, orange liqueur, and little lemonade concentrate. Mix it all up in a big bowl and grab your long straws, you know, and just sit there. These guys, these guys really get it. This particular poster, if you look at my um Tequila Aficionado's Instagram, they have this poster in there. They have a section of the of the barreling room that's dedicated to them, obviously, because you know they they these folks have the they have the deepest distribution. So they're gonna they're gonna need the most room. They even but, got recipe there with making an old fashioned with the reposado. See, I would honestly, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's right here. Yep. But I would love to do the old fashioned with that single barrel. Mm. Ah, that's good stuff. I bet that would be good. Yeah, we're gonna next, next time I visit you in Vista, and I and I'm that's a threat. Okay. Uh, we're gonna do that side by side with that single barrel and go, oh, <laughs> hello. Um, you that's don't recall what you paid for it though? Uh, I think it was more in the 60 70 dollar range, somewhere around there. Hey. You know, for even this, this is this is outstanding. Uh, is. That's our take, folks. I know we could go on and on, but this is one of those worthy celebrity brands. And we've talked to we have maybe a handful of celebrity brands that are really handful. worth going after. Right. And this is one of them. San, Santo Fino Tequila, Sammy Hagar, Guy Fieri. And if you stick with us, folks, we are no, going 1107. To 1107. Uh, uh, Destilleria El Viejito, and I go through their history uh, in our April issue of Tequila Aficionado magazine. Go get it. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Go get it. The PDF version is free. If you want a hard copy, you can get all of those on Amazon. Uh, they're all available on Amazon. Uh, otherwise, subscribe and the PDF version is free. But here's what I will tell you very worthy brand, number one. And if you can swing a distillery tour, give them a call ahead of time. They may or may not say yes, but they're they're it's a great family-owned distillery in the old school fashion. And and now I know why Guy Stone and Sammy went to them. I know why Patron went to them. I know why Karma makes her tequila there. I know why El Bandido Yankee yeah, has your tequila there. Yep. I get it. I understand it. But you you folks who maybe have never been to a distillery, you've been to some big ones, check this one out if you can. 
uh, give them a call. They're, they've got, I'm sure they have contact information or email and, and see if they'll let you go visit. Cause uh, you can watch all my videos and all of our pictures <laughs> all you want, but there's nothing like experiencing it there as mm -hmm. it happens. And it's amazing folks. Go, go check them out. I can't say enough about the family, the distillery that spoke volumes to me. Yeah. I know brand of promise nominee in that reposala category. That's our take. We're going to stick with us. We are going to revisit Santo revisit. Mesquila. Mesquila. That's going to be a lot of fun, folks. Let me Should tell be. you. Uh, but that's our take. I'm Mike Morales here in Southern California. That gentleman out there is Dave Dinius in North County, Vista, California. Vista. Uh, you've, been, you've been watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our platforms, all of our right channels, here. networks. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being a thumbs up, a, comments, a, a we long love time them. watcher, subscriber. Hey, hit the notification bell if you're watching us on YouTube. Uh, we we post a lot of videos. They go out like almost like within the a same lot. week. A lot of videos. Um, also, if you haven't subscribed to the magazine, do so. It's free to subscribe. Uh, again, download it. You can look at it on your phone. Download it. You can read That's it. What on I your, do. Yeah, on your lunch hour. You know when you're going. Yeah, I'd rather <laughs> on tequila right now. Uh, but anyway, and whatever you do, folks. Hey, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely.